Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to Ruzel Facebook Live. Today is Monday, and I have a special guest from Pensacola, Florida. Nick, how you doing out there today, bud? Nick? Nick, can you hear me? There you go, Bob. All set, Nick.
no sound. Check, check, check. Check. Curtis, we good? Check audio. Hello, check. Check. Hold on. Curtis, can you hear me? Hold on. Check. Oh, technology. I don't know why my mic is muted. Hello. No. I'm on Bluetooth. Carrie can hear me and see me. All right. Um, go back to what we were doing. Here, I'm gonna give you a pod. You should be able to hear it. And, and then go this way. All right. Age of technology, we're always having some sort of difficulty or something going on. So as I was saying, hopefully you can hear me and see me. So to check our parting, <clears throat> I'm gonna place a comb on the apex, the highest point of the head right there. And that's generally wherever the comb will lay flat and you can see the roundness of his head shape right here. So I see him as high part, the high point of his head right here. I can see where it starts to round down. Second, I'm gonna take my other comb, place it right here <clears throat> behind the ear on the parietal ridge. It's the widest, squarest, flattest part of the head. I'm gonna to touch the tips and that's gonna make it 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is typically a square shape which is referred to as a masculine, a masculine shape or more of a classic shape. And that's what we want. We want to maintain the roundness right here on the side of his head. So touch the tips. <laughs> we see where we have our 90. Now with Nick's head shape, it's a little rounder towards the top. So if I were to drop his baseline down, it would end up being right here. But his natural corner is right here. So for this instance, I'm gonna leave his parting where it is a little bit higher up. You can also check in the back. Same thing off the high point of the head and off of his occipital. His occipital is not super prominent or protruding. It's a little bit flatter. So same thing, 90 degrees. We see that shape right there. That's where the head is rounded in right there. 
touch the tips, 45. But it does match right here as far as where my parting should be. So I know that my baseline is where it should be. So first things first, we're going to start our baseline. Pick up my flipper. I close my flipper. And when I start my baseline, I'm going to start at the flattest, widest point of the head. Up underneath. And because I am going to skin, I want my spine of my comb flat on his head. Typically, I drop about an inch below the parting, but because his head shape is rounder right here, I'm going to drop a little bit lower because I want to keep that squareness on the side of the head. Spine flat, piece straight up, hair coming straight out at 90 degrees, and we're going to cut. So you can see we've got our beginning of our baseline right there. So now I'm going to move forward. And instead of pulling 90 degrees from the head shape right here, I'm coming in, I'm scooping out and pulling straight out right there. Opposed to pulling straight right here. If I pulled the hair out 90 degrees from head shape right here, I lose my square plastic shape, it comes round and I don't want that. So we've got our center, we move forward. Now we're gonna follow our part and our head shape down and around to center back. And we just continue down and around. And if you're not familiar using these techniques at first, your initial side, your beginning side, it'll feel a little bit uncomfortable because you don't necessarily know where you're going. You don't really have your roadmap or being 2020, I like to call it my ways app. I don't really know where I'm going and I don't know where the cops are hiding. Little Nick knows all about that. So we're gonna come down and around. My guideline is right here. I know I'm moving this way. My comb parallel to my part and we'll move right around. And I have a little bit where I need to even it up just a little bit more, a little bit of unevenness. So that's how you set up your first baseline. So what I'm gonna do that's a little bit different, and I mentioned the last time I taught, is that you have to know the rules before you can break them. Typically, I will do one half of the head and then work on the other side of the head, but because I'm doing a skin fade, and it's easier for me to teach it doing everything at one time, I'm gonna go to his opposite side. I'm gonna work on this baseline to connect everything and then we'll debulk with some more clipper over comb and I'll fade them out. And if you're interested in watching the last time I taught, I believe I was doing a scumbag boogie and I started in the center back of the head because I wanted to create more symmetry. And just like I stated, like you have to know the rules before you can break them. And that's just one of those things. If you've never done the techniques, definitely recommend you work on one side and then go to the other. Or if you're new to hair cutting or if you're new to our style of cutting hair, check that out. And anybody else is all of our other educators all over the world. Everything's archived on YouTube. So if you want to go back and watch some of what we've been doing over the last few months, um, most of the U.S. educators are on there, a lot of our international guys. And Rob's even done a couple of videos as well. And what I love about this hair tonic and this water, besides its degreasing properties and everything that it does to the hair, it opens up my initial conversation about product to the patron in the chair. And if I can get them talking about product and smelling product and experiencing it from the beginning, I most likely will be able to sell them something towards the end of my service. 
And with everything we're using on Nick today, it's nothing different than what I would do to anybody else in my chair normally. Like if I play my cards right, and if I'm enthusiastic enough about my product, he would be leaving with five different products today. So going back, set up our baseline again to our natural recession, coming through down and around, following his head shape. Super short. Going right around his world, so it wants to be a little fighty. But I know where I'm going right here, so that'll work for now. Same thing as the opposite side. Closed clipper, come up, center of the ear, not too high up, off the round of the head, pull the hair out at 90, spine flat on the head right there, and cut. Uh, my beginning of my baseline, and cut. I'm gonna speed through the fading a little bit once I get through with this debulking. If you need to me to repeat something, just throw a comment or a question in the block below and I'll slow down and I'll reference it or we can talk about it real quick. As a barber, for me, watching someone fade isn't the most exciting. That doesn't mean that it's not technical work. It just doesn't excite me as much as some watching somebody do a lot of scissor work. And before the world became, became a, uh, a fire, before the world was on fire, I had some plans to do some stuff this summer and go work on some scissor skills, but everything's been canceled and we'll reschedule. Okay, so we have our baseline set up on our other side. And I will debulk just a little bit and I'll go in and skin them out. Same thing though, even when I'm debulking, I still start center, comb up to where my guideline is, the bottom of the baseline from above, clean that up, move forward. And down and around. So one of the things that I used to do when I was a new barber is I would get lost if I didn't necessarily have a system in place. And for me, I'm a sucker for haircutting systems and how I should follow a haircut because I don't know what I'm doing if I don't know what I want my desired outcome to be, right? But if I don't know how to get to my desired outcome, I'm not going to get there. So that's why I like systems and structure. Before I cut hair, I was in the military, so I'm kind of keen on having something and how to do it. And that's why I love the way we cut hair with Rusal and the old school and Scorum is a majority of the time it's baseline down, work on the cool hair, connect to the boring hair, blow dry style finish. It's like four or five steps total. So what I like to tell all my students when they're starting out is once you learn the systems, you can pretty much do any haircut, whether it's a skin faded crop, whether it's a long trim pompadour, a vanguard, when you learn the system, you're going to be able to do it. You just have to learn the techniques. And a great way to learn how to do scissor over comb or clipper over comb is doing some debulking, like what I'm doing on Nick here, before I actually do some skin fading. Because I'm going to erase this anyway, so I might as well practice it, right? Now go ahead and let me know in that comment section, like, do you cut hair like this? What's your favorite way to cut hair? When you're doing fades, do you start from the bottom up, top down? What's your technique? Pull this hair out of the way.
All right, so we de a good bit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start with my fade. But for this, I'm gonna start in the center back. Same as my baseline and setting my baseline in, I'm gonna start in the center and then move left or right, or right or left. And when I refer to my baseline, I was talking about on the side of the head over there. I always start center, forward, back. Same thing when I do any tapers or any fading. In the back, I start center. And I'll move right or left. Now come up, I'm going to debulk. I'm going to use that C shaped scooping motion. Not as much with this clipper because my blade is very flat. I've got my, I believe it's the taper blade or my fade blade on these new Babelists that I just custom made. And we'll just work center right and then over to the side. Again, as I was talking about that roadmap earlier, like where I'm going, now I know where I have to connect over here from the front. Looking good there, Nick. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. Gabriella said, thank you for your service, by the way. Oh, yeah, no problem. I've been trying to Any work out questions? my audio issues over here. Nothing as of yet, bud. Okay, cool. Um, one, uh, Scott McGee asked, did you attend the old school? I did. So back in 2018, I had the opportunity to go over to Rotterdam. And it was, it's like Disneyland for barbers, I, I, honestly. Like, it was the best time. I went over there, got to hang out with Rob and the guys at, the, at Scorum. And then you go through the training. And knowing how to do the way we cut hair... I kind of had a, a leg up on what was going on, but honestly, I think that it almost made it harder. They made it harder on me because I know what I'm doing and how to do baseline down techniques. Uh, but it, it was an awesome experience meeting up with barbers from all around the world, sharing stories and like bringing everybody's passion, brought them to Rotterdam to learn how to do some haircutting. And that was pretty awesome. And when you were done with class, Pretty much most nights I would get up and go with the guys at the barbershop. We got with uh, Milky a little bit. We went over to the Worm, like one of their like punk metal venues and like hung out and watched some bands play. And it was pretty cool. And whenever everything gets back to normal one day, I plan on going back over there for the five day course where they do the photography class with yellow and stuff. That'd be really awesome. So if you haven't gone and when we're able to, I definitely recommend going over there to learn everything. Yeah, and I would book as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. When things open up, it's going to be a madhouse. <laughs> so fading the area between his sideburn on his beard and his temple, I open up my clipper just to clean up this little bit because I'm going to fade into the beard from the bald. That's something I would recommend doing for most of your clients if they have a beard and they're rocking a fade. Unless they want that hard line of hair right there. I know some guys are into that. If they do, that's cool. That's their thing. I'm trying to convince Nick here to get a chin strap just for at least a week. Or just a mustache. That'd be sick. The old school is open, as Miss Marta Harmon just informed me. I would suggest if you do want to go to the old school, look them up at oldschoolbarberacademy.com. And go ahead and book your slot as soon as you possibly can, because I'm sure they're going to sell out as fast as possible. Uh, again, I definitely recommend going to the old school. Like, even if I didn't work with Ruzel, like I would have loved to even gone there. It was such an amazing opportunity. All right, so something I learned at the old school, actually, and I don't know why it took me this long to learn this. Here, hold this real quick. And it took Rob standing in the old school, being very animated 
and telling us. So coming up as a barber, a lot of times when you're doing fades, you're checking for balance, right? And if you don't know what you're doing, or maybe you do know what you're doing, this is the way you do things. When I used to check for balance and haircuts, I used to pull out all these different protractors and rulers, the measurements on my phone, like trying to line everything up to make sure that this side matches this side. And I don't know why it took me going to Rotterdam to figure this out, but Rob just showed us because he did the same thing. He was like, hey man, just turn the chair. And then you can see in the mirror where you need to be on this opposite side. As barbers, we should be looking in the mirror anyway. That's how we check our line work for our fading and our other haircutting stuff. <clears throat> I know a lot of the times at our shop, I try to promote facing everybody out, one, so that I can use the mirror as a tool, and then two, so everybody in the shop can talk to one another and hang out. It's the whole point of being in a barber shop, yeah? Like, everyone just talking, hanging out, communicating as a place to relax for the guys or girls that like shorter haircuts. And anytime I face them towards the mirror is whenever I'm working on the top. So if you come from a cosmetologist background, you're probably not so used to facing them out when you're doing clip clipper work. So facing Nick in the mirror or away from the mirror, I'm facing the mirror. I see about the corner of his eyebrow right there is where I need to start my fade line. But right here, I'm gonna open flipper, clean up that sideburn. Right about the top of the tragus right here, this little middle part of the ear. I'm gonna flick up and out. Once that's cleaned up, come in there at the top of the ear. A little bit of a C-shaped scoop. So I know where I'm coming from. I know where I'm going. You can manipulate their head to have them move wherever you need them to. And then just connect the dots. And just clean up behind us here just a little bit more. All right, easy peasy. All right, so next step, open up my flipper all the way open. Start and center back again. That's where I started to begin with. His occipital's here, so I don't want to go above that. I'm going to fade up about an inch from my bottom. And same thing, following that head shape up and around. I stop behind the ear right here. And then I use the chair. If you notice, I'm using the chair to spin. A lot of the times you'll find new barbers or some people that aren't so experienced doing men's haircutting doing this walking around the chair like this. Well, the chair is just an additional tool that you can use in the shop. Besides your lighting and your mirror, use this chair, spin them. Save your body so you can do this for an additional 20 years. I just pulled that number out of the air. I don't know how long you wanna cut hair for. But spin the chair, super easy. We actually just hired a new barber, and not to put him on blast, but we just hired a new barber and I always love watching new barbers come in and cut hair because you're watching them adjust to the shop and the vibe and stuff. And they just stay planted like they've got their feet in wet cement. Just got to be loosey-goosey with it, a little flow with the chair. Move it around. And I'm moving from behind the ear forward. Just forward right here. And we're gonna stop. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go to the other side. See where I'm starting. 
I know where I'm ending. And across the way in the mirror there, I can see how high up I need to go. But my guidelines right here. So that step's complete. So now I'm gonna take my clipper, close it halfway. I'm gonna work this line, this little faint, faint line right in here. You can either get in there to see it. You can get in there and see it. This little line in here, I'm gonna blend that out between my bald and my half by closing my clipper halfway. And that's why I like the Babel slippers is because this locks. You can even hear it click. Microphone's up here. So you can hear it click, and that's how it, you're sure that it's where it needs to be. And come on over here so you're not staring into my pits. You can stretch the skin too, holding it nice and taut, allowing the hair, ensuring that it's going to stand up out of the hair follicle. Especially when you get into like super detailed fading, I would recommend stretching the skin like this. That way you're holding everything nice and tight. And in this situation, this scenario right here at the barbershop, like I can hear the hair being cut by the clipper. Normally when the shop is rocking and rolling, I wouldn't so much rely on hearing the hair getting cut, but that's one of the, one of the things I like to do if it is quiet enough to hear the hair cutting. I know that's something that I missed when we were closed for about two months. Like I'm sure there's so many things everybody missed about being closed when they put in place the shutdown, but it's like, you don't realize how much you miss the hum of the clipper and the cutting of the hair and the, the brushing of the hair away and the smells of the aftershave and the astringent foams. Like the first thing I did when we got back into the shop after we opened up was go over to the product cart and just smelling the pomades. You just miss those things. Let us know in the comments if you're back to work or if you're still out of the shop. Drop a comment in and say, yeah, I'm back to work. And we're almost done with this. I'm flicking out that tiny little bottom line. All right, so before I move up, I'm gonna move down real quick. Just in my tape pruning area. I hit it with my skeleton gold effects trimmers just to clean it up even more. Don Robinson, it looks good to see that you're back in school, my friend. Scott McGee's back to work in Illinois. John White's back to work. Nice. Good to hear. All right. So my next step, I'm going to take my half guard. Open it up. I power through this a little bit. About a half inch or so above my open flipper line with my open half. So when I'm trying to work on very, very clean blends and fades, I'll always do this step after my open flipper. But I do it open and then I come up behind it with a closed flipper. And that's just something that I've learned that kind of works for me a little better than going in there closed. If I don't put a line in, I'll have to take a line out, but I am putting a very, very faint one in. So it still works, but I just feel like it works for me a little better.
And I'm just following the head shape down and around. Again, spin in that chair. And I'm also trying to find my best lighting in here as well. Normally I'm working over in that corner station over there. And if it's a kind of dreary day like today with the rain, it kind of washes out everything. I have no light source or like a really good light source. So if you would see me any other day in the shop, I'm walking around trying to like get my lighting constantly, like looking at Nick's head, but I'm also looking at my shadow. So I'm moving, my body's contorted all kinds of crazy different ways. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at me and my body is in crazy position. I normally try to maintain that square body position, have him level. So I'm working within this box on my body with my collarbones and my, my belly button. But I'm looking for some lighting. All right, so now I'm going to close my flipper and just work underneath where I just debulk all that hair. And it's just very faint. Not really taking a whole lot. You fall asleep on me? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So cool story for little Nick and me and like what I've, how long I've known this kid. So Nick's 21, acts like he's 45. Uh, Nick's 21, but I've known him since he was 16. And you never know who you're going to inspire, like whose life you're going to touch besides touching them with your flippers. Uh, little Nick graduated high school, went to, bar went to barber school. And the next thing you know, he's working at, Wilfred's with me. So that's, that's pretty cool. I never thought that, that was going to happen. I just thought he was a little, little chunky kid from uh, Florida. Come and get a little haircut. Now he's a thick boy. <laughs> no, it's Nick. awesome. You never know like who you're going to inspire to get into the craft of barbering. Nick, did you cut his hair before he became a barber or after he became yeah, a barber? Yeah, he used barber? to be a client of mine before he started working here before I went to barber school. He was an okay client. I think he still owed me some money for some haircuts back in the day, though. <laughs> Actually, for the longest time, uh, when Nick started working here in our computer system, if someone is a delinquent and they miss their appointments, uh, little Nick used to be uh, like paid a book. It was really funny. So whenever he would schedule a lunch on the schedule, he'd always have to confirm that he was paid a book before he could even book his own lunch. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so we're moving along. Uh, so that was a closed one, or a closed half. We're going to move to the one. Take out any sort of extra weight that's laying around, and then we're going to get to the top. Kevin says, it's always interesting watching you work, Nick. James oh, Kinman's. So James Kimmon says, thick boys are in, and I have to agree with that. I'm a thick boy myself. Thanks, James. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move from my half to my one guard open. So with my one guard open, however, I'm going to start bumping into where my baseline was because my baseline, when I set it up with this clipper comb, is equivalent to a one and a half guard. So I'll open up my one, again, starting center and blending up into my baseline. I don't know, so another fun fact, I always <laughs> I always tell everybody at the barbershop here, it's like, I always swore that I would never teach like fading. <laughs> and I feel like the last couple of classes I've taught for, for us with Russo has just been fading classes. <laughs> but you go what you know. All right, keep on coming down and around. Put my light, my light's over here. Again, still C scooping up into my baseline. And that might create a little bit of weight, and that's okay. We'll go back through with flipper over comb and refine it.
All right, I'm going to close it. My close one. And as we're rotating, I'm checking in the mirror to make sure I'm not seeing any heaviness, any weight. And when you're fading this short, you want to look for the divots and the indentations. Sometimes it'll appear as if your line isn't as clean or your, your fade isn't as clean as it is because of the head shape and it's indenting in. So it might cast a little bit more of a shadow. All right, now we're gonna go through clean up any weight that that might have created. Not a whole lot. Close clipper on the flipper over comb. And if there is any weight or it looks like there's weight due to head shape, you can always go back in and refine it with your, your blenders or a little bit of point cutting action whatever you're comfortable with. Got a question for you, Nick. Okay. Juliet asks, do you adjust your clippers or are they factory set? Uh, these are factory set. And I do that because if I'm out on the road or if I'm out traveling at a hair show, if I'm in a class and for some reason I have a problem with my clippers, I can go to whoever, like say for Babelist, for instance, I know that I could probably go to the booth and borrow something from them and not have to set it to what I have it set to. I can just grab it straight out of the box and just work with it. Um, my trimmers, however, I'll, I'll tighten them up a little bit with their system that they have, but a majority of the time I just keep it factory. Move next, smart move. I, ha I have in the past, but it just takes some time to like figure out what you like. And I just like to leave them alone. How often are you do and maintenance on your clippers there, Nick? What was that? How often are you do and maintenance on your clippers? About weekly. If like I'll oil them just about every day or every couple of days and I'll clean them out every Sunday or Monday, depending on how much I'm using them. I've got quite a few clippers, so it just depends on how often I'm using them. Same, same goes with my scissors as well. Like I'll oil them up every like 14 haircuts or something, whatever was recommended by the Mizutani guys. Like I just try to keep everything functional and working. Okay. Just dust them off real quick. Fade looks all right. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna start transitioning into the cool hair, right? Something you can do, whether it is the Rusal Surf Tonic, or the spray grooming tonic or just the regular grooming tonic is you can use them as a cutting lotion. But with Nick's hair and that we're going to be like a heavily textured crop, I'm going to, first I'm gonna dry him up a little bit. That way the surf tonic can saturate his hair instead of it just being water. All right, so you can take your surf tonic or your spray grooming tonic and use that to create nice clean sections. Get the grip on the section that you're working on, but then also as it starts to dry, 
the grittiness of it will bring out like the, the salt in the surf tonic will start bringing out the texture so you can kind of see what you're working with before you get there. And it gives you a little bit of volume once you start drying it. But I like to use this every once in a while if I'm doing this sort of haircut. So you can saturate them with the surf tonic. You don't have to do too much. So first things first, I'm gonna create a mohawk parting from the center to center back. So very similar to what we would do when we're creating our pompadours, mohawk section, I'm gonna to cut to my desired length. However, for this style, I'm just gonna cut it nice and square 90 degrees. I'm not gonna ramp it at all because I don't really want any volume up. Everything's gonna be laying forward and down. So do this like I do normally. Come everything forward. Come everything back and see where his center would be. And for me, when I'm finding where my center should be, it's typically whoop, this way. right here. So where his eyebrows are, the inside of his eyebrows. I usually follow that up. It's about the width of a comb. We'll wax that later, buddy. Um, so about the width of a comb will be my mohawk section center to center back right there. It's about that. So I come in, take the tight side of my comb and I follow my comb with my thumb, holding down the section I'm parting away from to ensure they have a nice clean section. And this is something that has changed my life as far as learning how to part in a section like this. I've always tried, I was, I was scared of scissor work at first, like when I was first learning how to do it, because as barbers, we're not often taught like scissor cutting in school, right? Or if you are, it's grab all the hair and just cut it across the top. But I, I truly do believe that if you have a clean section and a clean parting, you'll be able to create a, cre a clean line and a clean haircut. which is why I was so excited to go to this class I was gonna to go to is because that's all we were gonna do. But if you watch any of the videos that Rob has been doing lately, like any of the longer length stuff, if you look at all those sections and how clean they are, like that's how you achieve those looks. Super clean sections. And every Friday for the next five weeks, Rob's dropping a new video. So be sure to tune into the SCORM YouTube channel. Okay, so we got our initial mohawk section, right? So now I'm gonna do something that's a little unorthodox. You won't really see people do this too often after, actually I'll just, I'll just start right now. So I'm gonna use a feather razor. So it's just a guarded razor, helps me create some different texture. If you're not familiar with how you use this, definitely check out that Project X video with Becca May. She did a whole haircut with one of these. Something, I think my air bud is dying here. But what did I do? You come in, I've got my guide down there for my baseline. You're gonna take your feather razor. It's almost like you're scalloping potatoes or something along that line with a vegetable. With vegetable. You go in there, this isn't gonna cut you because you have that guard on there. So you're gonna come in, I got my guide here. I'm just gonna scoop. And it's not taking a whole lot off. but it's shattering those ends there. So it's gonna give, give me a really awesome texture. So then I'm just gonna continue pulling up a little bit section by section. So my guide is behind me and just keep on scalloping. James Kinman has another question. He says, who taught you all the little techniques you're using? Like for example, looking at the eyebrows for the center. That's just something I kind of picked up over time from watching different educators all over the place. I was, I was watching a bunch of videos on partings and sectionings, and they said 
the easiest way for them to remember how wide a section should be was like the width of your comb. And I was like, oh, that's something I should probably take, borrow from. I don't even know who it was. I just saw that. And I was like, that's actually a pretty cool way to think about it. It's like something I, I forgot to mention, but I'll mention it now is I was watching Milky's video uh, a few weeks ago and he was saying when he was setting up his baseline, his fade area was the width of a comb. So again, it goes to the width of the, honestly, it might've been that and I just applied it to this. So if that was you Milky, thanks. Continuing to pull everything 90 degrees up from the head. Like I said earlier, we're keeping a lot of the length. We're just kind of texturizing the ends here. And not really removing a whole lot of length, but just trying to match it up. And 90 from the head, except for this fringe section right here, I'm going to pull up and match previous section. If I was going 90 from the head all around, I'd be pulling straight up this way, but kind of over directing slightly just back a little bit to connect this to this. So now that that's done, I'm gonna wet them again with a surf tonic. That's so much surf tonic in here. And we're going to create a radial parting from the apex right here to ear to ear. So same thing as before, follow behind, hold down the section I'm parting away from. And the same on the opposite side. Uh, come to you, hold on. There you go. Nick Julian asks, could you point cut for more choppier texture at this point? Or do you, you can, choose to and do I plan on doing it uh, afterwards. After this, I'm going to go through and continue to clean up and add some more texture. I just wanted to show some different ways as far as how you can do texturized cuts. So now that I've created this radial from ear to ear, still keeping that center section intact. Start getting into sectioning a lot when you get into some of these things. So I have a section here, I've got this section, just broke it down in a couple different sections here. Still find my apex and I'm gonna take horizontal across and pull straight up. And you're only scalloping the slightest bit. And then just moving forward. Now I'm taking horizontal sections, working from the apex forward to the front. Still pulling everything at 90 degrees. that's that side. Now, the round, the, tr the transition here, I'm going to create another section to connect everything to the sides. But first, I'm going to work on this side. Same thing. See my guide here. Pull my next section. stuff that doesn't belong out of the way. Uh, 
And our last little section here. Now we still have our crown section. Let's spin around this way. I'm just going to take pie shaped sections from center back to behind the ear on both sides. And then we've connected the top and the sides and we've created a little bit of texture on top. And then I'm going to go through and add some more texture. So it's not too different from what we'd be doing if we were doing a pompadour and you're connecting back and sides. And for the most part, all the sections are the same. The, te the techniques are just different. So it doesn't matter if you're doing plastic, so if you're doing more modern with our techniques, you can achieve and create any of the styles and looks. Which is why I'm super excited that we just launched a bunch of new fiber products. Which for the longest time we had our old fiber pomade, the dark blue, but as trends started going a little bit longer, more into like the haircuts of the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, we started transitioning the longer haircuts and longer looks. So with that, it's better for me to have a product that allows me to style a little bit more looser. It's not so heavy. It's a little bit more reworkable. So we have a bunch of new products for that. And those products would be, we have the new fiber cream, that just came out, which I'm pretty excited about that. That's what I have in my hair today as I'm growing my hair out. I'm growing my quarantine shop out a little bit. Messing around with the idea of going a little bit longer this year. We have some really special stuff coming out in August. Oh, yeah. I'm Can't so say too about much that. about it. Some people know about it. Some it's people hush, don't. Hush. It's hush hush right now. We've got a bunch of really awesome stuff This is going to be really special. All right. So back is connected to the top. We've put our texture down the center. We've connected the left and right sides to center. So now I'm going to connect the parietal ridge to the top. So. If you're familiar with how we've been doing cuts lately and how we've been sectioning stuff out. Mm -hmm. Which side are you going to? We're going to go natural recession to apex. I'll work on this side first. There we go. So natural recession to apex, combing everything down. And now I'm gonna to switch to a smaller scissor. But I'm gonna use a point cut that creates texture. What I want is a diagonal forward section because he's gonna wear his hair forward. You can see where my guide is. Come up and point cut. Nothing too aggressive. Just clean it up. Split my section, comb it out of the way. Put the section I'm going to out of the way. I have my section I'm working in. I see my guide behind it and below it. Section out where I just worked, move it out of the way. The section I'm going to. I see it right there. I'm going to cut. 
I'm using a five and a half inch scissor just so I have a little more control over the scissor. Well, I'm trying to take more precise sections and partings. I like to use something a little bit smaller. Normally I use like a six and a half score on master. That way you don't take your fingers off too, Nick. Yeah, also that way I don't chop my fingers out. All right, so we've connected forward. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. If you can see up here, I've got top of my section here. I'm just gonna bring it down. Bring it down to where I'm going. Same thing, section out behind the ear. Move it out of the way. And still working diagonal forward. Now my guide is down here. Split it. If there's any questions or anything about the texturizing techniques or if you do something differently, let us know. How do you like to texturize? Do you, do you bash with the thinners? What, what's your technique going for texturizing looks? What do you like to do? I do a little bit of everything, depending on what they want. All right, so now we're going to move to the very front. <clears throat> I told him I was going to do this, taking them pretty high, but not the most high. So this hair ends up right there. I'm going to start at the center. I'm going to go a little low. But I'm going to texturize it. I move into my guy here. Kevin says he point cuts and uses his blenders in the combo. So I'll detail this once I dry it. So let's get to that. <clears throat> okay, so drawing, again, I said at the beginning, I was gonna do stuff a little bit different, but still kind of classic at the same time. So normally when you blow dry it, we're using your blow dryer, your concentrator, and your vent brush. But because I'm doing everything forward and texturing, I, and Nick has a normal way to texture to his hair like naturally already. So what I'm gonna do is use the diffuser. And what this diffuser is gonna allow me to do is give me the heat, but without all the airflow. So I'm just gonna dry it naturally. I'm just gonna scrunch. And since I put so much surf tonic in his hair to begin with, it's going to allow me to create the texture that I want to place in there. And the greediness of the surf tonic is going to hold the hair. It's going to be a little bit of light hold, no shine. 
and some grip so I can mess it up and give them the texture that I want to put in there. So my blow dryer and my settings are going to be a high heat, a low speed. And I tend to start in the back and move forward just as I would as if I were doing a pompadour. So nothing's really changed there either. So here we go. James Kimmon, we hope to see you at Premiere myself, my friend. As of right now, we are scheduled to be at Premiere Orlando. That is subject to change, but as of right now, we are scheduled to be at Premiere Orlando. We're looking forward to meeting um, you too, no, buddy. I'm not going to mess this hair up too much as far as like scrunchy, because I still want to channel cut some more texture in there. So I'm going to keep it somewhat natural. And then when I go through with the texture as it afterwards once it's dry, I will uh, get real crazy with it. <laughs> When you're using a diffuser, you don't want it to be too close to their hair, to their head, because you want to burn their scalp. I'm going to take two crankies on my phone. Straight, natural fall. We'll do a couple more texturizing techniques. I'm just going to dry part that mohawk back. Or just visualize where it would be. I don't really want to move when it's super dry. <clears throat> so, this one first. I take my Mizutani Score Master, my 12 tooth blender. And what I like to do is every so often take this and just kind of add a couple fun bits of texture. Section doesn't have to be super perfect with this. However, comma, I'm not going to go too far forward. Nick, are those a score to A lot of times when people are doing texture, you might not know where to place it. And I picked this up from another educator. Like, just kind of mohawk it out. One, two, three. One, two, three. Pretty, pretty simple. Don't have to do too much.
And this scissor would be the equivalent of point cutting 12 to 13 times based off of how far apart the teeth are set. Now, some channel cutting. When I do this, I like to cut in like an X pattern, starting from corner to corner. The head has four corners on it. You have some natural recessions when your corners back here. I like to start from corner to corner. So I'll start away from me. And just make the scissors top just slightly. You cut in some texture. I'm not taking out a whole lot, just a little bit. And then opposite side. Julian, I do believe he is using the Scorum 12s, and there's also a Scorum Blender and a Scorum Shear. So those are the 12s. That means there's only 12 teeth on them. Making the scissors talk. Switch back to my smaller scissor to be in a space. The detail is cringe a little bit. And you can also use this time to refine any weight around the crown or around the baseline. Might be some heaviness in there. So just as you would if we're doing something classic like the pompadour, you can always go in there and take out some more weight, damp your fade if you want, flipper over comb, scissor over comb, whatever you want to do to refine your haircut and your shape. When you're going through and refine it, make sure you're pulling out sections similar to what you did earlier. <clears throat> you just have so much texture. <laughs> you have so much texture. Now. A little bit of deep point cutting, top of everything else. This is just so thick. Welcome, Paul Mitchell from New Orleans. Welcome to Rusal Live. We do this every Monday, so please be sure to tune in again next Monday. So now that we're done with the texture item, before I get into sprinkling some matte texture powder onto his head, I wanted to 
I'm going to shave his neckline, clean him up with some astringent foam, and place some product in his beard, and then we'll texturize him, or not texturize him, I'm gonna throw the texture powder in his hair, and we'll be finished, and we'll wait around for any questions, comments, concerns, whatever you got. So for his neck, shave his neck up. Place my towel. <clears throat> One moment, I forgot a hot towel. So I want to prep the skin with the hot towel. So and then I'm going to use our Grizzle shaving cream. And what I love about that shaving cream is it's an aloe vera based shaving cream. So it goes on a little bit, goes a long way. It's very thick. And if you don't use all of it as far as removing it when you shave, you can massage it into the skin and it just moisturizes. And it's pre whipped, so you don't have to whip it. You can just put it in a bowl or take it straight out of the can and apply it. It'll be more of a cream. And not so much of a, a, how you want to say, a soap. So a soap you would actually whip. This is a cream. You do not have to whip this. So applying my shaving cream. Just a little bit on the neckline. I like the hot towel on the neck and then the cool shaving cream with a little bit of contrast compared to like the hot lather. And if I were going to detail his beard, I could use this if I was going to do a line up or anything along those lines. I changed up my razor blade before we jump on stream. Whenever I get rid of the shave, I refer to my 3S guideline, which is swipe, stretch, and shave. That's something I like to teach my barbers when they're coming on and learning how to do shave. I swipe away any of the lather. So I can see any obstacles that might be in the way. Stretch the skin away from the direction of shaving. Wipe away what's left with the hot towel, a cool towel at this point. And then a little bit of the astringent foam in place of the aftershave. And I like to use it in place of the aftershave sometimes because it has a little more of a cooling sensation for me and it has the witch hazel in there as well. So it'll tone back the skin to its natural pH. Nice and cool. Apply that on there, whoever's left. I like the fan, so they have a nice, cool sensation. Isn't that correct? Correct. And the the witch hazel in the astringent foam helps get a bit rid of any sort of redness that might be on their skin. Nick has somewhat of a sensitive neck. So I like to use the astringent foam. And 
And then before I move to my top, I like to apply my beard products first. Three to four pumps, depending on the beard length. The beard foam is a leave-in conditioner, deodorizer, and a moisturizer. So when you pump it, make sure you're really massaging it down into the skin. So if you like to eat onions like little Nick does, it'll help remove onions and garlic. the scent of onions and garlic. And you can also use it on somebody's hair if they have super coarse, drier hair, or they feel like their hair isn't very manageable. You can throw some leave-in conditioner and beard foam on top of the hair as well. Mix that with surf tonic, mix it with a spray grooming tonic. You can mix and match pretty much anything and it'll work well together. Once I apply it, I'll comb it through. Follow up the beard foam with a beard balm. Both scents are the wooden spice, the new lemon zest and cedar scents that we released. Uh, I believe last year or earlier this year. Beard Balm is a mixture of shea butter and argon oil, so it gives you a light bulb and a light shine. And I prefer this combination over, say, a beard oil. If Nick wore collared shirts, his beard's a little long, and the oil would probably drip all over his shirt. So I prefer this combination and showing this combination of products to my patrons opposed to oil for that reason. It's not going to get all over your shirt and stay in. Alright, so last thing. Take my matte texture powder. Matte texture powder is a lightweight, very gritty kind of old product. Gives you instant volume if you apply it down to the roots, but it really enhances the texture that you cut in or the natural texture that your patron might have in their hair. And a little bit of this goes a long way. I'm not going to use a whole lot since we prepped his hair with surf tonic from the beginning. But when I apply this, I basically will pull the hair back and sprinkle on roots. More than I wanted. So I'll hit the roots first, really work it in there, and I'll sprinkle across the top and sides. And have fun part. And you just scrunch and get wild with it. And the tech mat, the texture, the matte texture powder isn't just for crappy looks. You can use it for a little bit longer looks as well. Just depending on what you want, how much extra volume you want, if any. This is definitely matte. If you use a good amount of it. You can get as wild with it as you want, or you can go a little bit tamer. All really up to patron in the chair. You can piece it however you want to style it with a matte texture powder. It's up to you. So just to recap, a little bit more modern look, but we still achieved it by using our baseline down techniques, similar partings to what we do on a pompadour, except for everything being back and up, everything's forward and down. I showed you a bunch of different texturizing techniques with a feather razor, deep point cutting with a straight shear, or the texturizing scissor. If you have any questions, any comments, or anything, feel free to let us know right now. And 
Thanks for coming to my rehearsal talk. It's been fun. I really appreciate having the opportunity to teach again. Awesome. Hope you guys have a great day. And Curtis, awesome, awesome, Nick. Thank you so much, buddy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude today's Ruzo Facebook Live. I do apologize for all the audio problems we were having at the beginning. I love Facebook and I love the internet. So the beauty of the internet sometimes. Uh, drop any comments and any questions you have in the comments. Myself and Nick will both come in and answer those for you. And be sure to tune in July 6th, next Monday. 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Central European Time. We have Dennis Nicotin from Lithuania tuning in. He's going to do a really cool haircut for you guys, and I will see y'all next week on Monday. Thank you again for tuning in, and I again welcome Paul Mitchell from New Orleans, and I apologize for the audio. Everybody have a wonderful afternoon, and thank you for tuning in.